Uh, okay, so uh, slow growing thigh mass in a 30 year old man. Ah. And uh, Arnaud and I were talking over coffee and he mentioned that I, maybe, maybe I'm a little too critical of the people who name tumors because the terminology is frustrating for users sometimes, but it's very difficult to find a good name for a new entity that everyone agrees with. And I don't have the experience of doing that. So it's easy to be a critic, right? And say, ah, I don't like that name, but I don't know what I would name it either. So, but I do want to point out that it is, it's challenging on both sides. So I appreciated that feedback. So here is a, a tumor uh, in the, the deep dermis extending down to the subcutis. Very cellular. And as we go closer, we have sheets and uh, some streaming fascicles of spindle cells with bizarre atypia, dramatic pleomorphism everywhere that you look. I would also point out, look at these. These are nuclear pseudo-inclusions. Now that's not a specific finding, but there are some lesions that, that tend to have nuclear pseudo-inclusions, and this is one of them. So with the hypercellularity and the pleomorphism, in this case, I think the tendency would be to want to call this a pleomorphic sarcoma, right? I mean, to me, as a sarcoma pathologist, the degree of atypia here is in the range of that seen in undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. But what I could not find is mitosis. So after counting, despite the pleomorphism, counting 50 high power fields, I think actually in this case, maybe I counted 100, maybe a little bit more than you need, but, but I think I found one mitosis or, or less, very, very low. And most pleomorphic sarcomas are gonna have multiple mitoses in just 10 high power fields. So whenever you see a soft tissue spindle cell tumor with pleomorphism, but very few or no mitoses, stop before you call it a sarcoma. Stop and ask yourself, is this one of those weird tumors that has dramatic pleomorphism, but is actually not sarcoma? And one of the clues is ugly pleomorphic cells, but very, very low mitotic activity. Okay, so that I find a very useful um, a tip in general for spindle cell tumors that sarcomas usually have mitoses for high grade sarcomas, okay? The other thing is, is it possible to get uh, undifferentiated sarcoma in the subcutis or skin of a young adult? Yeah, but un pretty uncommon. I mean, you can see undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma in young adults, but usually they will be deep masses. It's pretty uncommon to have undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma in the skin and subcutis, okay? The couple exceptions of things in that category are in elderly adults on the extremity. You see myxofibrosarcoma, which is a pleomorphic sarcoma with prominent myxoid change, and they often involve the skin and the subcutis, but they will have mitoses, usually dramatic atypia, very infiltrative, and they are almost always in older adults. I've never seen one personally in a young adult. I think probably every case I've seen has been 50 years old or older. I don't think I've seen one younger than 50. Now, it has been reported younger, but I'm very skeptical anytime something is called myxofibrosarcoma and the person's uh, middle-aged or younger, I'm always very cautious. The other time we see pleomorphic sarcoma in the dermis, or subcutis is in elderly patient on the sun damage scalp or face, head and neck. And those are a different pathway that we would call atypical fibrosanthoma if they're in the dermis only, or when it goes into the subcutis and a few other situations, we can call it pleomorphic dermal sarcoma. But they're also ugly and usually have obvious mitotic activity. But aside from those things, seeing a undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma small and in the skin or subcutis is relatively unusual and should make you stop and think, am I sure this is a sarcoma? Because it would not be a, a typical thing to see. So here, the pleomorphism has, a, there's a few clues. We have low mitotic rates. We had the nuclear pseudo-inclusions that I mentioned. Let me go to the PowerPoint. I have the, the pictures of the best areas. Somewhere. 
that's the atypia. And then here, there are nuclear inclusions. There are foamy cells, xanthomatous cells. Sometimes there is some hemocytorin pigment. So those are all clues to the diagnosis for this really rare and newly described tumor. Now this, Here's immunohistochemistry for CD34. Diffusely, strongly positive. And in case you're thinking, could it be a vascular stain, a CD31 and ERG would be negative here, okay? I want to also point out something that is a practical tip that I think a lot of people are, don't pay attention to. Notice that the dermis is normally positive for CD34, okay? So CD34 is not a specific marker. It stains vascular tumors. It stains many fibroblastic tumors and some fatty tumors. And it's most helpful, I think, when it's totally negative is the time I find it most helpful or when it's strongly positive in one of those tumors that should always be positive or almost always like dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, the vast majority will have diffuse CD34 except for fibrosarcomatous ones. And this tumor, which is kind of defined by its CD34 expression, but just remember that the normal dermis should have a lot of CD34 staining normally, okay? But here we see that the tumor cells are diffusely CD34 positive. And then also, Here's pancytokeratin, and it's very focal, but there's some very weak, wispy staining in some of the tumor cells. There's also some background mast cells, but see, there is some tumor cell staining just focally with pancytokeratin. That's a very common finding in this tumor. So this tumor is known as uh, superficial, CD34 positive, fibroblastic tumor. And I'll, I'll try to not be too critical of the name. But I, I and also because uh, Sharon Weiss, my mentor, who I respect deeply, was one of the people who helped describe this. The one thing I would say that I, I wish were added in the name is something to indicate the dramatic pleomorphism. Because the pleomorphism is a, a constant feature of this tumor. And it is CD34 positive, but it's very ugly. And yet it has a very good prognosis, okay? These are rare and newly described. The key is the paradoxical lack of mitotic activity in contrast to the dramatic pleomorphism. And they are diffusely CD34 positive and they usually have some degree of keratin expression. It's often patchy or focal. And I think they can have a little bit of Desmond too, if I recall. And they tend to be on the lower extremities of adults. They tend to be in the skin and subcutis and usually about five centimeters, but it can range a bit. And uh, I think about only 30 or so cases have been published. I've only seen, I think, two cases in practice that I've recognized. And there has been one example that had a metastasis to a regional lymph node, but no one so far has died of this disease. Um, I can't remember if it was this patient or the other one, but I, one of the patients we had for a complicated reason uh, involving the person's profession, they did not want to have a complete excision, which is normally what I would recommend, negative margins. And their tumor did recur after a year or so. As far as I know, they're still doing well, but I suspect they had a recurrence because they didn't get a negative margin, but they did not have metastasis as of the last time I had checked. So it seems that this falls into that category of, of low metastasizing potential, kind of that indeterminate range of tumors that are not really fully malignant, but maybe not entirely benign, that they sometimes rarely can metastasize. But I think the really important thing is to recognize that this is not undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma. The prognosis is much better. These patients don't need radiation therapy probably or chemo or anything like that. And for the patient to know you have something rare that we don't fully understand, but based on our limited knowledge, you're likely going to be okay. That's a much better situation than you have a high-grade sarcoma, right? So I think that that's an important uh, thing, and there have been a few papers about this that you're welcome uh, to read about. It's very, I, I've not published the two cases I've seen, but, but maybe I should eventually. Um, 
And yeah, this, this particular case, I think, did have less than one per 100 high power fields. It was just hard to accept. I was like, there's got to be a mitosis somewhere. And I kept looking and looking, and it was very low. So another tumor that's kind of like this, the same scenario, looks a bit different, but it has pleomorphism with low mitoses, is pleomorphic, hyalinizing, angiectatic tumor, or FAT, P-H-A-T. Because in English, you know, P-H uh, makes an F sound, like, so FAT. That's another tumor that is very uh, atypical cytology, but very low mitotic rate and has an excellent prognosis. So those are, those are important um, to keep in mind and, and consider, okay? So they were diagnosed as um, uh, sarcoma before the description of this? I think probably so, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I suspect because there wasn't really a category. It's an ugly tumor. I imagine they were called sarcoma, NOS, or undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, I suspect. Uh, I don't know for sure. I mean, they are clearly quite rare, but, and um, the, uh, the other thing, I can't remember if I put it in here. Maybe not. They are pleomorphic, there are no uh, specific uh, rearrangement. Uh, so that's a good question. So there is a, an entity, is uh, PRDM, PRDM10, PRDM10. And there have been tumors that look like this that have um, an abnormality of PRDM10. And the WHO 5th um, edition soft tissue book suggests that maybe these are closely related or that they represent a subset. I wonder over time if we'll recognize that maybe this is not purely one entity. Maybe there are, are a couple of things that fit into here. But I think it is a worthwhile um, tumor to know about because it can get confused with sarcoma and yet behaves much better. So that's kind of my thought. Any questions? I mean, I have questions, but I don't know how to answer them. <laughs> but it's an unusual combo of strong CD34 and focal keratin, you know. And when I um, when I um, have uh, when I have reported these, I put quotes around the name, and I tend to do that sometimes with tumor names that sound descriptive. Is because we use descriptive terminology in pathology, and it's important to help our surgery or treating physician colleagues know, I recognize that this sounds like a name I just created today, but it's actually the proper name currently for this tumor. And I do that even with things like atypical lipomatous tumor, which is a name we've been using for quite some time because I had a surgeon once call me and they were not a surgical oncologist, not a cancer surgeon, but they said, so this is like an a, a lipoma with atypia, right? And I was like, no, no, not exactly. Um, and in the old days, it, that tumor was actually called atypical lipoma for a while in the 1980s by Harry Evans. So, so again, I can't it, complain that people don't understand, but so I do try to use really clear, like this is the name for well diff liposarc when it arises in the extremity, because it does take a couple minutes to write that comment, but it, right away I can tell the treating doctor, this is what this means. This is what I want you to do about it. And I give treatment recommendations pretty often in my reports. I don't know what the tradition is in France. In the United States, some people do that. Some people never do that. I'm pretty bold, okay? I mean, look, I got a belt buckle from Texas. My wife is a Texan. You know, Americans have plenty of flaws, but we are bold, and that sometimes is good. Sometimes. Je suis désolé. What can you say? Um, uh, in any case, maybe I shouldn't have gone there, but the, it's late in the afternoon and I'm just freely associating ideas. But the, the point is, is I, you know, if I know about a tumor, like a soft tissue tumor, I was like, I know more about this probably than the treating physicians usually. So I'm going to tell them, this is what I want you to do. And I almost never have received, maybe never, in almost a decade, com received complaints because I'm giving them the chance to not have to go and Google superficial CD. What is this thing? I saved them time in their clinic. I was like, here's what it is. You should refer it to this doctor or you should excise it or don't do anything. It's going to be fine. And I've saved them time. Now, in tumors that I'm not as familiar with, I don't, I don't go into that direction. But I figure if it's something that I understand well and can easily explain, why not help um, the treating physician understand? Or times where I say, well, this is complicated and usually I would excise it, but this patient is a 90-year-old woman and it's on her foot, not, not this tumor, but something. I, I did that once on a 
chondroma of soft tissue in a, like a very elderly patient, and it was on the foot. And it had pretty bizarre atypia, which is reported, but it's rare. But I said, I just don't think it's a sarcoma. And normally I would want an excision, but if they excise this, this lady may never heal from that wound because she's old and has poor vascular flow. So I put in the report, you know, normally I would want this, but given the age and the morbidity, I think maybe the risks are worse than the benefits. And the surgeon called and left a message and said, thank you, that really helped us make a decision. And I was like, because sometimes I think I waste all this time writing these comments and no one cares. No one reads this. I think I'm helping and they're, and they're just like, what? Okay, it's cancer, whatever. And uh, so when I get this once in a while, someone says, it made a difference for the patient. I'm like, <laughs> worth it. So I don't know. That's how I feel. Thank you. You guys are a great audience. I really appreciate the. I really appreciate it. Okay.